Have you ever wondered how to start an art business? No? Okay then, never mind. My name is Dries Keters and I started my art business nine years ago and in that time I've exhibited my work globally. Berlin, Milan, Buenos Aires, Brussels, London. I've won dozens of awards, was featured in some famous magazines and even exhibited my work in some well-known museums like the Coda Museum in the Netherlands. And in this video, I will be explaining how to start your art business. First things first, if you want to develop an art business, you have to know what professional artists are and what they do because most people think that professional artists make art. And that is actually not true. If you look at the history of the best artists, you see that the best artists were also the best business people and spent most of their time on their businesses. I'm thinking, for example, about Rembrandt with his factory, about Andy Warhol with his factory, about artists today, even Damon Hirst, Jeff Koons, etc., etc., all spending a lot of their time on their business. Professional artists will easily spend 80% of their time on marketing and business and only 20% of their time on their art. Whereas beginner artists will spend 80% of their time on art and 20% of their time on business or on watching Netflix. And so as a beginner starting your art business, you will have to be willing to spend 80%, which means 40 hours a week or more on the business side of your practice, knowing very well that while doing that, you will likely not make any money in the first couple of years. And so how does that look 80%? What do you do during that 80% time? Well, the first thing that you need is obviously a place to sell your art. This can be a gallery, this can be an online gallery, your own website. And obviously some picks will be better than other picks, but it really depends on what your goals are as an artist. I've made a lot of videos about that on my channel. Anyway, if you don't know which one to pick, I would suggest to build your own website with WordPress, for example, instead of Shopify or Squarespace or any of those platforms. Now, just having a website will not result in people automatically finding your website and buying your art. And so you will have to drive traffic towards your website yourself. And the easiest way to do that, and the cheapest way at this moment, is social media. Social media is the future of the arts and a great tool to sell your art. Sotheby's and Christie's are selling million dollar items on social media as we speak. And so if they can do that, you can most definitely sell a $500 painting or a thousand dollar painting. Now, when it comes to growing your social media presence, there are so many things that we could be talking about. But if there's only one tip that I can give you, it would be to talk with people yourself. Make that first step yourself instead of waiting for them to come to you. And then afterwards, making that step thousands and thousands of times. Here's the thing, if you go to an Instagram profile that has a thousand followers, that is an art profile, and you comment and you like their post and then you send them a DM explaining what you like about their work, 95% of those people will check your stuff out. And if your stuff is good enough, then they will follow you afterwards. And then if you like some more and comment some more on a regular basis, and they see that engagement from you because you're following, following them as well in this, in this scenario, then, then they will probably start doing that for you as well. And so now you have an effective way to increase your follower count and increase your engagement on any social media platform, basically. Now, this process obviously takes a lot of time and can easily cost you 10 hours a week. And so you might be wondering, why is social media so important? Why should I do this? Why should I spend over an hour a day talking and interacting in meaningful conversation with our people online? Well, here's why. The middleman is disappearing and is being replaced by the internet. And so what we will see in the near future is that the traditional gallery model will be replaced by the internet. We will also see some huge shifts in how museums pick their artists. Because museums need visitors, they need ticket sales because their funding from government depends on that. And soon those museums will realize that an unknown artist who has a million subscribers on YouTube actually brings them way more visitors than an established artist that doesn't have an audience except for the 10 collectors that really love them. And as a result, five years from now, those museums will start exhibiting seemingly out of nowhere those YouTube artists. And obviously by then it's going to be too late. And so what you want to do is start your social media presence, building that social media presence right now when it's not saturated yet. 
On top of that, I would also suggest to build your email list out because you never know when social media decreases their organic reach and when you cannot reach your followers anymore. And so that's where the mailing list comes in. So now we already have two important aspects, a place to sell our art, namely our website and a way to drive traffic towards that place, namely social media. And so what's next? How can we make sure that the people who land on our gallery space actually buy our work? How can we make sure that the conversion rates are really high. Well, it has everything to do with which art you make. Now, the next thing that I want to explain is not something I did myself, but looking back, is definitely something that I would do if I were to start over. The biggest mistake that artists make is that they think that they have to decide which art they make that they think that they have to decide which, which art style to pursue, and that is completely wrong. What you have to do instead is let your customers decide. The truth is that your customers decide what they're willing to pay for and what they're not willing to pay for. And you have to let them do that, otherwise you will not sell anything. You will be that artist that makes something super strange that nobody understands, and then nobody buys it, and then the artist says, well, nobody understands me. I'm misunderstood or whatever, you know? And so how does that look? How do you let your customers decide? It's fairly simple. There are two aspects that you have to do. The first one is to figure out what they like. You do this by posting a lot of your original art on social media and then see which artworks get most likes, most shares, comments, etc., etc., etc. And then after you know which artworks are most liked, you want to figure out which artworks people are willing to pay for. Because what people are willing to pay for is oftentimes different than what people like. And you do this second thing by all in the beginning putting your prices extremely low. So that you get a lot of sales volume going and then you can just literally see which artworks are being sold most. And then after you've done that, you know which artworks sell most, which artworks are most liked. You want to combine those two things and the combination of those two things will be your best possible ideal artwork to make. And then you make more pieces that are similar to that ideal artwork piece. And of course you raise your prices to a decent price point. Now, obviously you cannot do this with a finished large scale masterpiece. That would be way too costly. And so what you want to do is you want to do this, test these things out with very small original works or art prints of your original work. Now for some, this process of finding what sells best and then making more of those types of artworks is selling out instead of making what you love. But it simply isn't. This is what an artist is and should do. And this is what all famous artists have done before you. This notion that you should be a strange misfit that is misunderstood by society and, and only gets recognized after he is that is it's complete bs and on top of this not being true it's also an extremely toxic thing that you should not believe you should not believe in the starving artist myth this is going to hold you back as an artist and it's going to lead towards failure really now one of the best tips when it comes to starting your art business actually doesn't come from me it comes from today's sponsor liking this video, which is something that you should be doing because it's because of your likes that this video is an ad-free experience. And it's because of your likes that you don't have to listen to some kind of two minute canned, boring sponsorship message. Now let's talk about the niche because you might be thinking by yourself, Dries, should I have a niche? Everybody has a niche. What's a niche? I also want a niche. Well, the truth is that you don't need, need a niche at all. The people who are talking about a niche are predominantly people on YouTube, actually. It's kind of a thing to talk about it now. But if you would be talking with multi-millionaires who have been building businesses, you will not hear them talk about niches too often because the truth is that a niche doesn't really matter that much. What you need to do instead is every time that you make a new offer, create a new art series or whatever, make sure that it, is it, that it is in line with your existing customer base. If you do that, 
then you will have all the benefits of having a niche and more. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, having a niche in the art world actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Because in the art world, a large portion of your customers will be buying your art because of you, not because of the artwork. Not because of the niche or the affiliation with the niche that they like. Let me explain this for a moment. Let's compare Gerard Richter with the following two artists. Nikki Hare and Lynn Spohr. All three make scraping paintings. And so by definition, all three are in the same niche. But the people who are buying Nikki Hare are paying 10,000 euro, $10,000 for that painting. They could buy a Lynn Spohr which would be the same quality, the same painting, and way cheaper. They are not doing that because they want to buy a Nikki Hara. And the people who buy Richter are paying 100 times more than Nikki Hara. Even though the paintings are the same quality. People are not buying a niche product. They are not buying a painting. They are buying a Richter. And so if you're an artist, you should stop thinking about a niche. And as you can see in the previous example, and also something that I want to mention is that the quality of the artwork doesn't matter. I see this all the time. Artists go to a gallery, they see an artwork, for example, a scraping painting in a gallery hanging $50,000. And they will say, well, I can make the same painting. I'm as good as this artist, but my work isn't worth $50,000. Well, guess what, Thomas? Everybody can make that painting. That's not the point. The value of that artwork hanging in that gallery at $50,000 price point is not determined because of the quality of the art at all. The reason this particular artist is selling at the price point of $50,000 is because he had 18 exhibitions in major museums and has been making art, selling art, exhibiting art for the past 30 years. Thomas did not pay his dues yet. This artist paid his dues. This artist climbed the ladder, just like in the corporate world. In the corporate world, you have to climb the ladder. In the art world, that's the same thing. In order for your paintings to increase in value, you have to acquire those credentials, museum exhibits, gallery exhibits, awards, etc., etc., etc. Now, where it becomes interesting is when we start thinking about which credentials are overpriced and which credentials are underpriced. Is it still smart to start all the way underneath the gallery ladder, for example, or is it smarter to start building a YouTube channel? Is having YouTube subscribers five years from now going to be more important than a solo exhibition? I don't have the answer to those questions, but I do, I, I would argue that Having 500,000 YouTube subscribers is way more powerful than having a solo exhibition in a mid-level gallery, for example. And so it might be true that mid-level gallery representation is overpriced compared to a YouTube channel. Now, let it be clear that while I'm saying this, I only have 4,000 YouTube subscribers. And so I have no incentives to say this or believe this or anything. Another tip that I want to give you is that when you are building your art business, that you understand, make sure that you understand copyright law. Make sure that you are building a business that is legal. You cannot, for example, just make portraits of famous artists and movie stars and then sell prints of those portraits online. That would be fair note and you would need the rights to use the likeness of those characters in order to sell them. When I was doing the research for this video, I came across an amazing girl on YouTube that was sadly enough doing this that's illegal and so her shop will likely be closed down due to lawsuits very soon in the next year perhaps two years and so you don't want to be that artist that is building a successful business that actually succeeds and then has to shut it down because of a, a detail a legal detail another thing that i want to quickly mention is that nobody who ever built a successful business knew how to build a business before they did. There has never been an artist who knew how to become famous before they became famous. And so at some point, you will have to stop researching and just start building a business without really knowing how to do it. It's through the doing that you will learn. And in order to make this video complete, we have to talk about one more thing, the most important thing. And it's not making art, it's not marketing. It's not social media. It's not having a website. 
it's sales. The most important aspect of every art business is sales. And so we should be talking about that, explaining you everything about selling your art. But that would be another 15 minutes and frankly, completely different video. And so I'm very sorry, but we're not going to do that. Predominantly, because I already did, it's called how to sell art on Instagram without having a lot of followers. Take care, take a look, and remember, art is the only necessity.